All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. It's good to be together tonight for Bible study. And uh, we have with us again uh, Pastor Chris Miles that's going to be uh, talking about the foundation of leadership. Of course, you get me again, your lovely host, Jonathan. Uh, and we're just we're happy to be here. And um, Brother Brentley has gone tonight to Wilson, North Carolina. Um, I forget the brother's name over there. Daves. Um, he's fallen a few times. He's not probably in the best health. Though, so I think Brother Brentley's gone to really check on him and in, maybe encourage the little assembly there. And so we're just praying for travel mercies for uh, Brother Brother Brentley. Amen. But tonight we're going to get into the foundations of leadership. As they say, everything rises and falls on leadership. Yes. Amen. So uh, we have Pastor Chris. We, if you have the book and you're following along with us, uh, the foundations of leadership. Um, if you don't have it, they can go to Harbridge. Where can they get? They can get this book on Amazon. Amazon. That's that's probably the best way. You can go on Amazon and get this as either an ebook or you can order a paperback, paperback copy for yourself. Great book. Highly recommend it, um, and go through, uh, through through this book. There's, uh, he's written it. It's, it, he's written it for people like me that can read it and understand what's going on. You know, some books you have to read with the dictionary, a thesaurus, and and everything sitting there with you, um, and that's okay. But it takes you forever to get through a book like that. Um, this one is written kind of like the words of Jesus for for every one of us to get through. Yes. So um, we appreciate that. So if, you're, if you have your book with us, or if you're writing in your notes, we're gonna be starting today from about the middle of page 66, which is the second lesson. And with that, I'll let Pastor Chris take it away. Well, we ended on, chap on lesson number one of this chapter two, and I just wanted to go back a little bit on it. It's, um, I want to start here. It says, I was reading last week, this last week about a group of engineer students who were given the problem. How long should a three pound beef roast stay in a 325 degree oven for the center to reach a temperature of 150 degrees? They had to do these projects in all kinds of different ways. One kid did this series of, of experiment. Uh, another kid went out and bought a roast an oven, a thermometer, and a watch. Another one got out a spreadsheet and did all the mathematical calculations on the conductivity of the roast and figured it all out. But the kid who got the quickest answer was the kid who picked up the phone and called his mom and asked, how do you cook the roast? <laughs> you know, sometimes we try to make problems real complicated. And he just said, because my mom knows how to cook a roast, so I'll just call her. You know, that's what sometimes that, the the answers to the most important and biggest questions in life are not figured out logically. Uh, they are discovered rationally. The reason God allows impossible circumstances in our lives is to remind us of the fact that He is there. We can turn to Him. We can say, God, how do you cook a roast? God, how do you figure out this problem? God, how can you help me in these circumstances? Connecting with Him uh, Rationally is not measuring the problem according to your own abilities. This is connecting with God. And we do have this, and that's what the chapter was about. We measure problems by our own abilities, and we should connect it with God. When you and I feel inadequate for something, or who, and who does it at times? If you're trying to lead it in a great way, you're going to feel inadequate sometimes. When you feel that way, we have got one of two choices. We can choose control and comfort. Well, we can choose trust in God. We can choose it, it's all about us, or we can choose it's all about Him. And I choose it's all about Him. Right. And yeah. but see, we do have, and that's what we're talking about, measuring it by your own abilities and what can I do and I, what little bit I have. And, you know, and, and I like in this lesson here that Jesus asked um, Philip, He said, what do you have? Mm -hmm. And then they said, what do we have? We had a couple of fish and some loaves of bread. And, and, and he said, what is this? What is this going to be to this crowd of people? And, 
But see, in our hands, a little is nothing, but in God's hands, a little is much. Right. So, and, and what we're getting here, there's a second lesson in the feeding of the 5,000. I call it the scales lesson. That is when you're trying to face a situation or circumstances, you're trying to balance it out. You think that that balances out as well. I think I can handle that one. But what do you do when you got 5,000 people and all they and they all need to be fed. You think, I will throw in everything I've got, but all I have is five loaves and two fish. But is that going to go, what is that going to do to the scales? It ain't gonna do much. Not at all. <laughs> so we're, we do have a tendency to look at a situation and we try to handle it in ourselves. Mm -hmm. But see, God, God allows this, and I like what he, what he said in the, in, the, in the scripture here, that he said these in, in John 6 and 113. He said this to stretch Philip's faith. Right. See, God allows situations and circumstances to come up in our life. Not that he, he already, and, and see what Jesus said. Just think about this. We're measuring this by us, and we're using these scales, and it just don't never, to me, it never balances out. Maybe you got it all balanced out, and it all works. But me, I seem like... I'm, my scale's way over here, and, I'm, and then if I let God have it, then He's over here, and then I let raise up. But when I try it, my scale's out of balance. So, but see, that's what he, and see, God said this, or Jesus said this right here in those scriptures. He said, or the scripture says, Jesus already knew what He was going to do. Yeah. He did this to stretch Philip. So there are circumstances and situations that we come into as walking this, this, this journey of life that God allows to come in us because He wants to stretch us. Right. He yeah. wants to grow us and He wants us to, to trust Him. I always say, I, God showed me this a long time ago, you know, we, uh, we're like a stool that has uh, four legs on it but one shorter than the other one. You know, when we lean on ourselves, we're leaning over. Mm -hmm. And that short leg is us, and those other legs is God. But when we lean on towards God, we can stand a little bit firmer, can't we? Yeah. But we have such a tendency to lean on ourselves, and we feel like we're always falling. So that's measuring by what I can do and what I can accomplish. But we need to look at what, what, what can God do through me. Right. Father, use me. Put me in. Let me do what you want me to do and, and show me. Because it would take too much. We ask these questions. Jesus' miracle gives powerful answer to both leaders in that moment. It would take too much. No need is too great for Jesus Christ. In that moment, they saw 5,000 men, not counting the women and children. And they was like, we, even in the scripture it says, if 200 pieces of silver is not enough to feed this, this crowd of people. So we don't even have enough money. <laughs> But then Jesus just said, what do you have? Measure it by what I can do. Right. And see, we have an advantage that the disciples didn't have. We have the scriptures. They had to live, walk through it. You know, we can look back and say, wow, look what Jesus did with a little. You know, we have too little. And little in the hands of Jesus has become much. And we're on page 70, moving to 71. He says, now look at these two guys and the way they struggle with this, like any of us would have, struggling with this challenge, there are two life challenges, questions in the way that they responded. Is your life, own life, and impossible circumstances you are facing a tough time? And I'm going to tell you, today, we're facing some tough times, aren't we? I mean, it's not affect, it's affecting everyone. Right, from the least to the greatest. You can have a, a lot of money in the economy, the stock market's falling down, they're losing money. They, they got, when they go to the pump, they're paying the same gas price we pay. You know, so whether you have money or don't, we're living in a tough time. A difficult, and as leaders, it's a difficult situation as a leader. Right. You know, but we have to stand firm. You know, when I, I don't worry about it. I said this in a meeting we had, you know, when I, I trust God in, through the whole thing. Yep. You know, he always, he supplied every one of my needs through the good times, the bad times, the indifferent times. And if, if I can't trust him now, then what kind of a leader am, am I to my family? You know, we can look at pastors and, and say, you know, you should be doing this. But you, as a Christian, should say, God, I trust you. I'm not complaining about the gas prices, even though they are high. Mm-hmm. 
They high. Mm. They high than ever been in our history. But you know what? He, he always makes a way. You know, let's just look, let's look back in our lives. Us that we're most of here or um, somewhere near 45 and over or 50 and over. <laughs> if we go back into the 60s, remember gas prices was what, 12 cents a gallon in the early 60s, late 50s, and then it doubled. Then it doubled to 25 and cents. Bread was a quarter yep. But see, when it doubled to 25 cents, the world was coming to an end. <laughs> but we made it through it. We always complain, don't we? And then we went through that, and in the 70s, the gas doubled to 50 cents. We were short of gas. Some days you had, they went by your tag. If you had an odd tag number, you went and got gas. If you had an even tag, and the world was coming to an end. Jesus is coming any moment. <laughs> but you know what? We made it through it. Yeah. Then when gas went up to a dollar, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I cried because I was 16, got my 17, got my driving license. I was looking forward to that 50 cent, 50 cent of gas. I got $5 in, in allowances a week, and it went up to a dollar. I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> but you know what? We made it through it. Mm-hmm. Then a few years ago, when the economy turned upside down in 2009, 2010, gas got over $4 a gallon. You know what we did? We made it through it. See, God, is, if we just look back in our life, we can see the scriptures that God said, I'll take care of you no matter what. So tough times, dis- difficult situations, impossible circumstances, we've all been there. We've been in situations that um, we've been sick. And we didn't think we was going to make it. We don't know how we was going to get through. How's all the bills going to get paid? But you know what? We made it through it. God made a way what seemeth no way. Right. So if he did it then, he can do it now. He's the same God. We say it all the time. What? He's the same God yesterday, yesterday today. today, and what? Forever. Forevermore. So if he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore, I think he knows that the gas prices are $4 and something a gallon. <laughs> It, it didn't shock him. I don't believe when they went up, he looked over and Jesus was like, wow, can you believe that Chris is paying $4.50 a gallon? Mm-hmm. I can't believe that, Jesus. What happened? He already knew. So he made provisions and, and put stuff in my path and your path that we would have enough money to make it through, even though it would seem like we don't. And we may be struggling, but you know what? God is showing you who he is. Amen. So we're, we're, we can't measure by what we have. In our own, that's the scales lesson. The scales lesson is we try to measure things and balance it out. And I'm going to tell you, I don't know about you, but I've never been able to balance out anything in my life. Not to where it's, it works smoothly. It's always been struggles. Always. But you, God has always made a way. And, and, and this, I've decided nothing is too big for God to accomplish in my life. So I'm going to quit putting my, measuring it by what my bill is, and I'm going to trust Him. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to keep doing what he's called me to do. And, and no matter what, if he says do it, I'm going to do it. And that's what we're talking about in, in this chapter here. Uh, why, why do we not let God decide that? He may not know what, what you're doing. He may not know why you are doing that right now. It may be just about your pride. And see, that's what happens. Uh, we have pride, in, and the pride gets in the way. I, I don't have that problem. Okay. Well, I'll talk to y'all then. We have pride, and pride sometimes gets in the way. (laughs) He's overcome that. We'll talk amongst ourselves. But see, that's the the thing. But we got to make, we got to say, God, I know you can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, am I not, I'm not saying that we should do every big thing that comes in our mind. We should, we got to balance them out and say, God, you, you need to take on this. It's too big for me. My wife has been fighting a battle, and we've been praying and praying, like, Lord, why don't you fix this? But you know what? He's doing it in his time. We just got to keep praying and keep believing that we're going to walk right out of it and walk right into what he wants us to do. And, and, and see, the, the question from Andrew is, I decided I have too little to make a difference. And sometimes we think that, when, it, when we're doing stuff in the church, right? Sure. We don't have enough. Mm-hmm. Well, I only have, I can only give a dollar. A dollar's not a whole lot with one person. But if everybody give a dollar, what we got? Ten people, here we got ten dollars. Wow, just like that, we got ten dollars. We can do more with ten than we can with one, right? Yeah. So we got to say, you know what? I'm going to do 
what God's called me to do. Mm -hmm. it, this is all I have, and this is all. And God knows where you're at. He knows. He knows what you can and can't do. It's up to you. You know. And and this is these are challenging questions because we often look at life and say there's not enough, not enough money, not enough time, not enough energy. We have got this little sentence that we sometimes play in our mind. We will fill in the blank in different ways. When I get more blank, then I'm going to do blank. So sometimes we can put in there when, and I got a few here. When I get more time, I'm going to do more. I'm going to do ministry. When I get more energy, then I'm going to spend time with my kids. I'm going to tell you, I don't know about you, but every day goes by, my energy level goes down. When I get more money, I'm going to give like I really like to. When I get more confidence, then I'm going to lead. When I get more experience, then I'm going to lead. There are all kind of ways to fill in that. You have to fill them blanks in for you. And, you know, there's a little secret about this feeling that there is not enough. You will never have enough. I've heard so many people say that when, when uh, I get rid, I'm gonna get rid of this sin and I'm gonna get rid of this thing and I'm gonna get rid of that, then I'm gonna come to church. And they never do. When you come to church and you give it to God, He helps you get rid of it. <laughs> so it, we, we will never have enough. Our resources are always gonna be too small. We're going to look, because we, we're basing it on what maybe Jonathan has or what I have or what my brother has. And we're comparing ourselves to them. And I can't do what they can do. You're right. Maybe you can't do what I can do, but you can do what you can do. If we, everybody do, just does what they can do and don't measure it by somebody else, we'll do so much more in the kingdom. You know, there, but there's nothing compared to an incredible impact, the eternal impact that God wants us to make it with our lives. So you and I look at it and say, how could that happen? God is more than able to make up any lack of ability that you might have. God is more than able to maximize the abilities he has given you. See, our ability, we feel like it ain't, ain't, ain't much, but we give it to God. And I look at this when I, when I put these books together and uh, with this one here, I struggle with it. You know, I'm like, well, I've been preaching this for 12 years, so... But when they come to put it, you know, well, ain't nobody going to like the book. It's just me. Nobody's going to buy the book. It ain't very good. <laughs> you know, but then I just prayed about it and God said, give me the liberty to go ahead and do it. So I did it. And, so, and most people like the book. You know, I've not had any bad reviews yet, but today's a new day. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm tr I trust the Lord. So the thing is, it, is it looks like maybe only reach 200 people, but those 200 people that, that this helps change in their life is worth it. If that's all the books ever sell, it's 200. But if, if, it, only changes, sell, if it changes, if it changes one, one, if it change, if it helps to improve someone's life, then it's worth it. So that's what we have to look at. Not that. I mean, I'd love to sell a million copies tomorrow, but probably ain't going to happen. <laughs> but I, I'm trusting the Lord. And you just, now we go back and look what Jesus did with the five loaves and the two fish. He just said, tell everyone to sit down. Jesus ordered, so all the men alone, numbered 5,000, sat down on the grassy slope. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and blessed them. And passed them out to the people. Afterward, he did the same thing with the fish. And I like what the word says. It says, and they all ate until they were full. Mm. They didn't just get a piece. They, I look, I say it like this right here. They sitting on the, on the hill, leaning back, and they're like, whew, I can't eat another bite. <laughs> As we do today, we'd fall asleep, right? <laughs> you know, you just look out and you see five to 15,000 people just laid around <laughs> off of two fish. And... And five loaves of bread. So, and, and, and that's a great story. I mean, it's a great event that happened. And, and uh, but, you know, just think that we give this to God. What little he had. And I heard a message a guy spoke one day. He said, a little boy showed up with his lunch. Mm. Just enough for him. And he give it up 
And Jesus fed 15,000 with a little boy's lunch. So you may be that little boy. I just have, I don't have nothing but put it in Jesus' hands and look what he can do with it. Amen. It's not by our abilities. Quit measuring and weighing things out by your abilities and weigh them out by God's abilities and give it to him. And see, this is what, and we're going to move to page 75. Step one, God reduces our resources. Why does he reduce our resources? You see that God wants to do something great in your life, and the first thing he does is reduce your resources, which is counterintuitive. Uh, would it be better for God to let us see what we have? You think if God wanted to do something great in your life, the first thing he would do is fill your bank account to overflowing, give you more energy than you could ever imagine? Ooh, I'd love to have that. Make you feel like Superman, ready to take on the world. He will do something great in your life. He's going to reduce your resources. So what you have to do, you have to lean on him. Like that three-legged stool with a short leg. If I lean on my own, I'm going to fall over. But if I just stay on those three, we can balance it out. But there's God's holding us up. He's those other three. Just think about this right here. He reduced... Gideon's army to 300. All them thousands showed up. He reduced the Israelite army to one kid and five stones in a sling. Hmm. Think about that. All this great army. The disciples, they go out and find all the food they can find in that huge crowd and they come back with five loaves and two fish. Now all these people, that's all they had. They came back with five loaves, two fish, it is a sad day. He reduced our resources right along of that. He takes what we have. He adds to it so there is more than enough. So don't, when you're going through something, what he's telling us in his word, when you're going through something I'm re and you feel like your resources are reducing, God's fixing to do something great in your life. So don't look at where you're at. Look at where he's carrying you to. He said the second step is he maximized the need. He does not us, let us escape from how big the need really is. We want to. We want to pretend that it is not that big. I can probably handle it. Then he just shoves it right in front of us. Here's the crown. Here's how big it really is. Here's how big the problem really is. He maximizes our need. He makes it seem, he shows you this is what it is. Why does God not make our lives easier? How many of us has asked that question? Mm. Why does God not just give us all the time that we need while we live in this world? Why does he not just give us all the money we need while we live in this world? Why does he just not give us all the resources we can possibly need? Because if we had everything, would we trust him? No. Would we lean on him? He knows that. I think you probably know the answer. I know it myself, at least. If I had all the time, all the money, all the resources I need in the world, I would never look to God and trust Him. How many in here that's trusted God all these years, if you had everything you need, would, before you give yourself to Him, would you really have give up and trusted God? Or you say, well, I don't need that. I got everything I need. We see it in people throughout the world that have a lot of money, they have a lot of resources, and they don't come to church. Mm -hmm. They don't call on God, and they're miserable. Right. Like David said, give me neither poverty nor riches. Yeah. So you, we, we've got to say, thank you, Lord, for trusting me, and thank you, Lord, for putting me in this situation. I would just have trusted in myself the rest of my life. I would have gone, I would have gone to heaven, and God would have said, I want a relationship with you. And I would have said, I never knew you. I never, I never understood. It is in the very lack of resources sometimes I realize how much I need God. Mm -hmm. Not only on this earth, but also in eternity. Where, my, where, by the way, he will meet all our needs for all of eternity. He magnifies our need. Then some, if something happens in the situation of reducing our resources and magnifying our need. Here I am, and here's the problem. The scales are out of whack. In that circumstance, someone trusts God with what little they have. So right here, in this situation, it was on that hill. They had all these people. 
to feed. And it's like, we can't feed these people. We don't have enough. We don't have enough money. What do you have? Oh, I guess just a little. And they was in a the panic. They was just, and here Jesus said, no problem. Yeah. Sit down. Trust me. Let me show you what I can do. If he did it then, can he do it in your life today? Amen. He may, I mean, I could just, I don't know about you, but I can, I, when I read, I'm sitting on a hill watching it unfold in front of me. And I could just see the, the disciples just running around, as it said, through the crowd, finding, what do we have? What do we have? What, and just panicking. He wants to feed these people. What are we going to do? And he just said, Jesus said, give me what you have. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. I mean, you can read the story, but when you really get into it and you see the excitement in their faces and how they was running around, I could just picture them running around the hill, saying, what do you got? What do you got? Well, you've got to feed these people. What do you got? And the little boy says, hey, this is what I got. Yeah. And then they had to go back to Jesus with that. Imagine the disciples went through the crowd and could only find a little boy that had two fish and five loaves. And they went with Jesus with their head down. Jesus, this is all I have. I don't know what we're going to do. And you know there was probably more food out there, but yeah. that little boy was mm -hmm. willing to give up what mm -hmm. he had. But just think about that. How they were so heavy burdened. And we mm -hmm. go through a situation in our life, and we don't have enough. We feel the same way. We've run around. We've tried. We looked under the mattress. We dug through the, the, um, the couch and tried to maybe turn it upside down, shake it, trying to get the chains out. We can't find any. And he says, what am I going to do? And Jesus says, give me what you have. Right. And I'll make it more than enough. Yeah. I'll take care of you. That's why he allows us to go through situations. That's why he allows us to go through circumstances. That's why he reduces our resources so we depend on him more. So you just need to trust him. In that incredible moment, whether it is a David who trusts God with the five smooth stones or a Gideon trusting God with his army of 300 or a boy trusting Jesus with five loaves and two fish. What we want to what we want to do is we want to wait for someone to come along who looks like they have more than enough resources to meet the need to lead the great way. And they never show up. The need is so great, but the opportunity is so great. What God always does instead is wait for someone to come along who is willing to trust him, even considering the fact that the need is so great. That's all he wants you to do is trust him. That's all he wants from us, isn't it? Trust me. In the case of it, in this case, it's a little boy. We do not know his name. I wish I did, don't you? It'd be great. We could call him something besides little boy. God often works like that. Nameless people in untold stories, but great, great, but great glory to God. The miracle of God leading through our lives in a great way. This only happens when someone decides to trust him in that kind of circumstances. The third thing that happened is God used the little that we have to show how great he is. He does not discard what we have. He uses what we give him to do something greater. I heard a man say this right here, and it's so true. He said, when you come to church and they take up an offering, give something. Because when you, you give something to God, if it's just a button, well, I don't have a button, put the button in the offering plate. Next time you might have a nickel. But see, when you give God something to work with, then he can work great in your life. When you don't give him anything, you say, well, God, I trust you, but I don't trust you enough to give you what I have. So he wants us to, to trust him. He wants to, show, he wants to show how great he is in our life. That is what, what I love. It is not like the boy comes up and says, Here, Jesus, take what I have. It's five loaves of bread and two small fish. And he goes, That is nice. That's cute. And throws them into the trash. Jesus didn't do that, did he? So he's not going to take what little you have and make it an insult to you. He's going to say, Thank you for trusting me. And see, at the end of the day in this story right here, when they... Uh, and we'll get into some of that in the next chapter, is that when they took up the food, what was left? They took up 12 baskets. Isn't that amazing? Yes. A little bag, a little bag lunch. Mm -hmm. They took up 12 full baskets of the, of the fragments that was left over. It's amazing. So Jesus takes the lad, takes what the lad had, and says without saying anything, he takes the loaves and he takes the fish, and he uses what the boy gave him to meet everybody's need. Everybody's need. Isn't it incredible? 
That is what God, God does. He uses what we give Him to meet our needs. So when you come, give something. Give Him something to work with. And I don't feel I'm speaking to anyone sitting in this, in this congregation right here, but we're live streaming. There's someone out there that, that God is speaking to you right now. He wants to bless you beyond measure. As you listen to this, whether it's today or whether it's tomorrow or down the road, when you decide to, that God is speaking to you right now, yes. He's saying, I need you to trust me. I need you to give like you've never given before. Because you're in a bad situation and you feel there's no way out. If you will trust me, I will move you from where you're at to something greater. And I believe that's what he's speaking to someone today. Uh, start here. It's easy to think when I get the corner office, I'm going to lead the company in a great direction. Lead where you're at. Be a leader right there. Right. Well, I'm not a leader. You are a leader because you've you got children in your life. You've got grandchildren in your life. You're leading those kids and those children to become greater men and women of God. You have to decide that I'm going to put myself aside and I'm going to lead like Jesus. You don't try to take somebody else's position. You just do the kind of leadership that you can where you are. Character leadership, integrity leadership, lead where you are and watch what God does with that. We think in this school, when everybody knows me, when I finally get popular, I'm going to lead in a way that really makes a difference. No, you start where you are. We think as parents, when my kids start, when my kids start to perfectly respect me, then I'm going to be the leader. No, you lead where you are. You start where you are and you watch what God does. Little in the hands of Jesus become much. And all of us in this world, even if it looks like you have a lot, we only got a few years in this world. It's a short life, whether you feel like you have a little or a lot of things in terms of eternity. Eternity, we only have a few things to manage in this life. You take what you have and you put it in His hands and it becomes much. Amen. Amen. So we're going to end. On, that's the, um, I don't know if we. That's a, yeah, that's good. So there's the. Um, if there's any questions anyone have, we will open up for, for questions. If there's any else come on online that they want to ask us about. No, we're good online. Is there anybody in the room that has a question on what we've discussed here tonight? I thought I'll just make a couple of comments. Maybe you're thinking how to phrase your question or comment, but... Um, you know, I, I like what you brought out that sometimes we feel so inadequate, right? Mm -hmm. And then what, what really makes it worse is that we also are going to, afraid we're going to be found out that what we have is inadequate. You know, just, uh, you know, we don't want everybody to know just how little we have, just how weak we really are or how small our little lunch is. Mm -hmm. But... I think what's so wonderful about that story is, like Pastor Chris mentioned, Jesus didn't turn around and belittle the boy. Like, you know, you're just a kid. What are you, you know, mm -hmm. you, what are you doing in this? And you just got a little lunch that was only really going to take care of you. I mean, that's all the mom packed for, right, was yeah. this little lad's lunch. But Jesus, like you said, just took that and says, I can work with this. Mm -hmm. You know, if that's all that the crowd would be willing to give up. Jesus is like, I can, I can deal with that. And so I think that's encouraging tonight. And to all of us, I'm saying, don't be embarrassed by the smallness of your gift or the inadequacies of your gift or the, you know, what little ability you do have, little money, whatever, time. We can sow with money. We can sow with time. We can sow with encouragement there's all different types of ways to sow maybe it's a lunch our dear sister brought it did you bring food for the everyone tonight so she's sewing with food amen we all need well i don't know about need but you know, <laughs> we all love we need food don't we to survive so uh, that's a that's an offering for the lord and i th i think that's really encouraging the lord's not going to uh, turn your gift away. He's going to use it. And he was impressed with the two middle, the middle two mites, right? Yep. 
He, the, Jesus thought they, she gave more than everybody else. Yes. So um, it doesn't matter the, the smallness of your gift. And I oft, often think about this. I uh, heard a man say that the tree of faith is sown in the field of doubt. Yep. You know, that's where, the, that's where the seed grows is in the field of doubt. You don't think we can do it. The woman that had the little bit of meal left in her pot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> fix you a cake <laughs> we're gonna fix a cake and die you know but in uh, all that how's that gonna happen how's that gonna work what can you do with this little lunch mm-hmm. here comes a great tree being born out of all that yes. anyone else awesome well it, as they say it's clear as mud yeah, it is. Perfect. <laughs> no, actually, it, it's really good. And I want to encourage you once again to uh, get this book. Everyone is a leader. You say, well, I don't have anybody following me. You have yourself that you need to lead. If nothing else, mm-hmm. you have yourself that you need to lead. You need to lead because these things, as Pastor Chris mentioned tonight, they're just not coming to you. Uh, a, a healthy spiritual life just does not, you're not born with. Just like a healthy body we're not necessarily born with. We have to cultivate that, right? Mm-hmm. You want a spiritual, a healthy spiritual life? Guess what? You have to go get that. And you need to be able to lead yourself, lead like Jesus. If you can't lead yourself, then as the scripture says, if you can't contend with footmen, how are you going to contend with horsemen? You can't lead yourself. Don't fool yourself and think you're going to lead anybody else. Um, So this book, it's on Amazon. Go get it. Read it. Don't let it become a dust collector or just a pretty line of books. We were talking today about just buying books to have books. Don't buy this book just to have a book. Um, It's I think it's twenty dollars, nineteen ninety nine, or is this twenty five? $24.99 $24.99 on Amazon. $24.99. We've been doing it here for 20. 20, 20 if in person, 24. And, and I don't want anybody to say, well, that's a lot. That is a very, very, very small price to pay for a major change in your life. People will pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for a reconstructive surgery. This is reconstructive surgery up here. And yes. so it's it's well worth any price. If this was a few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars, uh, I don't know how many you would sell, but it would be worth it. <laughs> so go get the book. We do, do we have any of these here yes. tonight? We have a few uh, signed by Pastor Chris tonight. Mm-hmm. And speaking of the author, uh, our dear brother has released another book called Honoring and Valuing Others. And I think this is one of the most amazing things about the Christian faith, the, the Judea Christian faith, is the um, value that we put on other people. That was unheard of when um, Israel was coming out of Egypt. And it's been a uh, principle of this faith, uh, of Christianity ever since, is seeing the value in others, mm-hmm. no matter who you think they are, whether it's a little lad or whether it's, as in this picture, we have a, a young lady and, and uh, an older lady. Uh, we want to value those that are older than us, but those that are older want to value the ones that are younger than us. And um, if we can't learn to honor, it's the first commandment with promise, right? Yeah. Uh, honor thy father and thy mother. So yeah. they can get this one. It's 1999. 1999. If they want a copy tonight, we'll do it for 15. 15 tonight. So, and we have several copies uh, that um, I would suggest uh, you getting your hands on. If you don't have the money with you tonight, if you could get it to me by this weekend, I can get it to Pastor Chris as well. So, um, you know, but this, both of these books are fantastic. Also, I just want to say, if you go on to Amazon, because I have a little inside scoop, that there's probably more books coming. 
If you go to Amazon and click on, and you look up either one of these books, uh, The Foundation of Leadership or Honoring and Valuing Others, you'll see his name right there. If you click on that, you can hit follow, and anything um, that comes up, any books that he may write, in the f well, that he will be writing in the future, will come up and alert you right away. You can just buy it without me having to say anything to you. <laughs> right? And so um, it's a really, really good book. And, and, and to be honest, um, you're not just patting Pastor Chris's pockets. Um, you, he's got a wonderful work going on all over the world. He just got back from uh, Trinidad last week. Saturday. 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 Um, he's already making plans for Africa in June, July, somewhere, mm -hmm. June. So you're helping support the work of God. It's not just buying him a nicer car. Um, he's got a nicer car. He doesn't need the book for the nicer car. He's using this uh, for the work of the Lord. And so it, he hopes it blesses you. So it's a twofold blessing. You get blessed and you get to bless someone else. Amen. So we think, yes, ma'am. How do I? How do you deal with self-doubt? Oh my gosh, tell Brother Tiberius we just don't have enough time. No. <laughs> what do you think, Pastor Chris? Well, self-doubt is, is, is hard, but you have to just do a, a mind change. Because we have been geared and, and, and probably since we were kids to, that we can't do these things and we're not smart enough. But God says, you can, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So you just have to make your mind up. And what I, you know, I like to say is we need to allow God to give us a mind transplant. Amen. And, you know, Jesus didn't, um, he took on the mind of God. And he didn't have no, no problems with that. So we need to take on the mind of God. When you have a lot of doubt, you look at everything from an earthly realm. Mm -hmm. And as long as you look at an earthly realm, you're going to have doubts. But if you study the Word of God, everything Jesus, most everything Jesus spoke, He spoke in the heavenly realm. And when He said that Lazarus was dead, and they or asleep, the disciples said, "Well, he, he'll get, he'll, he'll be better." And Jesus said, "No, he's dead." He spoke heavenly first. Mm -hmm. And they didn't understand. But then he had to tell them from an earthly standpoint. So we need to look at things from a heavenly standpoint. And when you're in the heavenly realm, you're not on the earthly realm. And that's where doubt really grows in you and fear grows in you in the, in the earthly realm. You know, people say, I won't get on a plane because it might crash. I say, hallelujah, if it crashes, I get to be with Jesus. I don't want one to go down. I want to make it to my destination. You know, I sat beside a young lady on uh, Wednesday when I flew out of Charlotte. They were going to a different place to Miami. She couldn't, she was afraid when the plane takes off. And I said, uh, I said, and she was a, appeared to be a Christian, uh, how she spoke, how she carried herself, the way she talked and the way we, we talked. And I said, well, look, don't worry. I told her this like right here. I said, you're going to get to Miami. She said, how do you know? I said, because I'm on here. <laughs> She says, what do you mean? I said, because I've got to get to Trinidad and I've got to get back home. So if nobody else it will cause this plane to get there, I will, because God has to work for me. I said, because I'm here, you're safe. Amen. That plane will land, and we did make it to Miami. And you say I made it back. Hallelujah. Amen. But see, that's how I look at it. I'm not worried about it going down. I'm not, because God has a work for us. And when you doubt that what God has called you to do, it hinders you. But if you just release yourself and say, you know what, I'm gonna walk into what God has me to do. I'm not worried about people. I'm not worried about circumstances and situations. I'm not worried about finances. God will make a way. And this one statement I heard many years ago really helped me and it said, the guy said that God does not call you and put you on a journey to starve you along the way. He will take care of every need you have. Just, just put the doubt away. Right. And say, I ain't worried about it. I tell my wife all the time, I said, you know what? I said, God's got us. 
He said, what are we going to do about this? I said, God's got us. But you know this right here? I said, God's got us. I said, look what he's taken us through so far. Right. You don't think he can get us the rest of the way? If he got me to here, he can get me the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. So I don't doubt anything. We just do what God's called us to do. You know, I'm, I don't walk around with no concerns. I have concerns. You know, I think about things, but then I, I ask God about it. And, and, I, and, you know, we talked about this not too long ago. We just say, instead of doubt, and say, God, what's next? Remember we talked about this of several months ago that we talked about? We just say, God, what's next? And when you, God, you ask God what's next, that should re remove all the doubt. Right? Just go with it. Say, God, I know you. And see, in the Word it says, everything that happens to me is what? For my good. Right. And to glorify who? God. God. So I say, thank you, Lord. I know it's for my good. I don't know. I don't feel the good in it. <laughs> but he said it's for my good, so I say, it's for my good. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And we just move through it. And I think once we get to that point in our walk with God that we're not looking back, doubting the abilities that God give us, and we just start walking into it, we'll see doors open that we never thought would open. We'll see blessings come our way that we never thought would be coming our way. But like one guy told me, he said, when you doubt, you do without. When you <laughs> believe, you receive. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to doubt because I don't want to do without. So Amen. did that somewhat answer his question? Hopefully that did. Yeah. I heard a guy talk about the three types of doubt, right? I just know one. You just know it's just all doubt, just right? Doubt. Well, there, there's three, the three types of doubt would be, one is what's imagined. Mm -hmm. So it, you being in a situation you've never been in before, you try to predict the outcome mm -hmm. or the non-outcome. Right. So that's kind of an imagined doubt. Mm -hmm. The other one is a ignorant doubt. You just don't know. Mm -hmm. So you've never done it before or, you know, you just don't know. So you've got to deal with that kind of doubt. And the other one is you've done it a whole bunch of times and it didn't work kind of doubt. So take, for exa example, the, the fishermen that had fished all night and not caught anything. Mm -hmm. Now that was, they'd done it a whole bunch of times and it didn't work. But they needed to learn that when Jesus said one more time, mm -hmm. you know, so sometimes we're dealing with, you got to figure out, is it just your imagination? You're trying to figure out what kind of doubt, you know, it is. Well, I don't know. If I try that, it's not going to work. No, that's, that's not a good kind of doubt, right. you know, because then you're just lazy. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. you know, and I just, you know, hope you don't mind on sharing a story. You know, um, when I was younger, the doctor told my mom I would not have any, have any children because of how my uterus was tilted or something. And so all the old elderly women would pray over me. And as I got older and I got married, and I did all kinds of things going to doctors and stuff. And I got to the point as I, I, I said, you will be done. You know, because we're going like that. And so it, I really made it like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm -hmm. And I never forget, God had told my husband, let's move to Charlotte. And we moved to Charlotte. And for some reason, he was at work, and I just, I got a pregnancy test, and I got, and it said positive. And I was like, okay, maybe that store has some crazy, you know, some false <laughs> pregnancy test. <laughs> so what I did was I went to two other stores. <laughs> All things are possible. And so when, mm. when that self doubt stopped creeping on me, part of me said, Thank you, Lord, because I know I can't do anything without you. Right. I can't do it on my own strength. Amen. I want to do it on my own strength. And, you know, here I am now, five kids later. You know, we're raising five kids. Praise so, God. You know, they grown. <laughs> two grandparents, you know. But that's what I want to tell people. Yeah, when you doubt in yourself, fall on your knees. Mm hmm. Work on your discernment. Talk to God. Mm -hmm. God is there. He, he removes the hair from your head. 
He will talk to us and say, glory to God, hallelujah. He will tell us what to do. Amen. But we just think we know what to do. Mm -hmm. and then we get in trouble where I go, Lord, but God didn't order our steps. We got to let him order our steps. Amen. 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 That's, that's amazing. That's a good story to end on, right? God wants to remove whatever types of doubt. He wants to remove them all yes. and help you to remove them all. So, um, so we thank you. We'll go ahead and at this time, go ahead and end our live stream. Uh, we thank you all for uh, being here with us. We thank Pastor Chris for this wonderful lesson out of his book. I encourage you to go get those, uh, the Foundations of Leadership on Amazon. May God bless you. Amen. Amen.